Hi, this is Todd Geis. Welcome to another quick tip video. Today we're going to be talking about splitting a FileMaker file. Um, so why? What are we talking about here? Well, uh, there's a very common file architecture model that people, lots of people in the FileMaker world use called the separation model, where we have two different files. We have a user interface file where the user uh, interface goes, and we have a data file where, where all the data goes. And there's lots of great information on the internet about, about why people wouldn't would want to do that, but um, the basic idea comes down to uh, that you would want to have your data in one file and your UI in another, so it's easier to do upgrades and updates uh, without having to do a bunch of data imports. Um, so it's very common, but it also take it also does add some complexity to your solution, especially around account management. Uh, so you don't always want to use it, or you may not always want to use it. If it's a simple solution, you probably don't really need to use file separation. Uh, this, so, you know, why bother? Uh, but sometimes you don't know whether, whether the solution you're starting is simple or complex. You're not sure. Uh, maybe it'll grow over time. So there are times when um, you might need to start the file simple and keep it all in one file. And then maybe later decide that, you know what, this is getting to the point where I really would like to manage this in a, in a separation model kind of way. So, um, so knowing how to split the file from one file into two is a way that lets you kind of delay that decision until later, which is often a good idea. Um, no reason to do all that extra work if the file never really gets very complex. The other reason to show this is because it illustrates a key concept about how FileMaker works and that it really works. Uh, everything is based off the relationship graph. And uh, so uh, we're going to look at exactly how that works when we get to the demo. Uh, so just to run through the steps real quick, uh, the basic idea is you start with your one file. You save a copy of that file as compacted, you change the name to something else. And then you create a file reference from the user interface file, which your old file basically, to the new uh, copy you just saved. And then you're going to swap out the tables underneath the TOs. And that's exactly what we're going to look at when we get to the demo. Then you delete the old tables and do some other cleanup. And when you're done, you actually have a functioning solution that uh, all the code isn't broken and it still works. You've just moved all of the data uh, tables out into their own file. So uh, that's it for the slides. Let's take a look at the demo. All right, so let's take a look at the demo file here. This is, this is actually just the invoices file that comes with FileMaker 13. You can, you can get it from uh, new from Starter Solution. And I've just added a little bit of data so that we can see, um, we can see how this works. Uh, this is just the dashboard. So I've got you know, f four invoices, a couple of customers, and a few products in here. So uh, this is our solution, and this is the graph. Here it's a pretty simple graph, but what what I'm going to talk about here works on any complexity that you have, and there's a really nice um, way that you can make sure that you've done everything that you need to do to uh, have your solution all all split up into two files. So here's our graph, and um, what we're basically going to want to do is replace all of the, the the calls to these base tables here into a uh, into another file. Let's take, so let's walk through the steps and we can see how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is save a copy as. And I need to make sure that goes into the right folder. We're going to put it there. And we're going to call this invoices data. And I'm going to save it compacted. I always typically do that. Um, just give it a chance to clean up the file a little bit. So we saved that file. And now that is in the same folder as this file. And now what I want to do is add a, a, a file reference to that data file. So we're going to add a file, and we're going to go and grab invoices data. So there we go. So that's done there. Now we go to the graph. And um, important thing to know here, in this particular file, we don't need to move all of the data, this one, all of the tables into the other file. This one table here called called company dashboard uh, really isn't a data isn't a data table so we're going to leave it uh, in this file and we're going to get rid of all these other ones so we don't have to worry about this guy this guy is going to stay but if we look at invoices here invoices currently is tied to the table that is in this file what I'm going to do is simply change it to invoices there that's all I got to do and if you notice all of the relationships stay matched up Everything stays together. We didn't break anything there. So basically, basically, we just go through each of these guys 
and we change out and we do customers. Now, you do have to be careful of the names here. You want to make sure you maintain the names. In these first two cases, the names didn't change, so I don't have to worry about it. But you can see now that whereas this guy, invoice data, is not in italics, this guy is in italics, showing that we've moved these guys out to their to the external file. So in this one here, we got to we have to um, we have to copy the name because when we go back and change to another to the other file and select customers, see it's gonna it's gonna change that name for us right there. So I just paste it back in. That's all you got to do. And again, these relationships are not breaking. So we go in here, copy. Oop. We're gonna switch to invoices data. And that was uh, a products table. So I select that, paste that. There we go. So here, this is again products. That's really all we got to do is just go through each one of these guys, change to the new one, switch there. Uh, here, invoices data, data. That stays the same. I don't need to fix it. Oh, let's make sure I copy that. Invoices, data, products. And we just have a couple more here and we'll be done. Products was the same name. And orders was uh, also the same name. So we're going to go invoices, orders, and there we go. So we can see that everything's been changed over. Now another thing, the way that you can check this is you can go to the table view and you can see you can see up here that um, there's no occurrences of any of these any of these tables in the graph because we've, we've replaced them all with tables from the other file. So now we know that these guys can all be deleted. So we can simply delete all those guys and that's all we got to do. So now this guy only has our company dashboard. This file only has our company dashboard file and the rest of them are all from the other table. So if we go back and we look at at this, you can see that our data is still here. We still have exactly the same thing that we had before. There's all of our invoices and there they're all together. So um, the other things that you may want to do to clean up is, is you may want to go through and, and rearrange your graph in the second file now. We've got this second table here and you may want to change this up um, to more accurately reflect a lot of these relationships we don't need. So you really only need relationships in here that are good for, for, um, for data. You don't need anything for, anything for UI. So for example, all of these table occurrences, I'm now in the data file here, remember. All these table occurrences really are only about user interface. So I can get rid of these because these are all the popover ones and we don't have any popovers in our data file. So we can start to simplify our graph. So you go through, you simplify your graph in the data file and, and that's really about it. Now you're going to have to deal with security. Um, you're going to have to make sure that accounts line up in both files and um, we'll save that for another video. Um, but that's really about it. That is uh, looking at splitting files. It lets you pretty easily and systematically step through and move all of your data tables out into another file. And um, just to make another point on that, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to move all of the uh, data files out. Perhaps you have, or all of the data tables out. Perhaps you have one table that's really, really big um, or containers that are maybe taking up a lot of space um, if, you're not using, uh, if you're not using remote containers. You may want to just move some of those tables out into another file, and this, this would let you do that. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do. So that's it. Thank you very much.